Hello everyone and welcome back to Payday 2 Heist Showcase. Last time we done First World Bank, you may notice that I have got different equipment and that's because once again, true to form, I forgot to hit record but thankfully I didn't manage to get into the heist before I done that. So, just a bag. I made sure to tell my teammates beforehand and they were all very amicable about it so it didn't really matter. We are looking at the Falcon Rifle. Uh, high accuracy, uh, how's my stability? Fairly low stability, but it works anyway. Very high damage, there's over 80 uh, a hit, so that's lots of headshots we're going to be looking for with that. 86 damage, charming. The mods that we are rocking are the Marksman's Foregrip, the Compares, nope, Tactical Compensator, no boost, no custom. We've got an LED combo, we've got a tactical grip, we've got an extended magazine, a mil-spec scope, and finally, the marksman stock. Not quite the optimal uh, optimal build that I would have, I would have the wooden foregrip uh, for the extra, well, the extra accuracy and stability. What's that relative to there? You get an extra one damage with the marksman's foregrip, that's a strange one. Uh, and for a secondary weapon, we are looking at the Cross Vertex submachine gun based on the Chris. Vector submachine gun 45 ACP big cartridge. Uh, we have got the this is the comparator's compensator I was talking about. We've got the comparator's compensator on it. No boost, no custom, uh, no uh, well, no attachment either. I'm gonna just stick a compact laser module on it just so that we can pop a laser out if need be. There it is. Old dinky sticking out at the side. Ah, oh. ah, oh. uh, no sight on it. Although, oh my god. Ah, go, let's go for it. We'll stick a surgeon sight on it, just for the funs. And we'll switch the reticle as well. There's lots of different reticles. I'll go through them quickly for you. Got all them. I like the silly ones at the end, like the little overkill logo, the Starbreeze logo. Just a fuck you, rock on, Lion Games. Ah, oh, it's such a laugh. And we'll use, actually, I think it'd be quite cool if we use the Predator style. I might regret that because it's actually quite far apart, but I'm going to be using it at close range only so it doesn't really matter and I've got a laser sight for if things go quite awry. Uh, melee weapon, we're using the bearded axe. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? And as always, Molotov cocktail armor bag and improved combined tactical vest. I'm going to stick with the war face mask because I really quite enjoy it. Look at him. He's like, whoa, he's had a great time. What has he been up to? Who knows? Heisting, probably, hence all the blood. I will see you in a second when we are in the lobby. Okay, so here we are in the lobby for Slaughterhouse, the second of the heist that was ported over from the original game and updated in a variety of ways. I'm not as familiar with Slaughterhouse as I am with First World Bank, even back when I played the, played the original game. Slaughterhouse was probably my... L no, no, that's not true. My least favourite heist was Heat, Heat Street by a country mile. But uh, I, ne like, I never really played Slaughterhouse very much. It is good though, it's not to say that it's bad, I just never really done it. It's, they've already been bought by another teammate, but the grenade case, ammo bag and doctor bag, as always, if you can afford them, are a good pickup. Apparently this guy's doctor bags with eight charges. Get ammo, says Ledog. Yes, we're playing with Rabbit Face, El v v v v Vul Valenza, Valenza, I'll say, and Ledog 3. Bunch of charmers, the lot of them. Let's ready up and... Hopefully, El Valenza. Yeah, there we go. We are right into the heist. So, our initial objective here is to stop an armoured transport carrying some shit. We start in this little, uh, well, charming safe house that we live in. Isn't that lovely? And we get ready on these little over overhanging bridges here. Now, the trucks are going to start coming along from there. We've got to shoot out the windows to, well cause havoc. Get them! One, two, three, that crane gets them. Not Kyle Crane, just the crane. No, uh, I just saw it for a second there, but yeah. Oh no, that's actually not too bad, that's pretty much ideal. Murky water coming down from there? What is this all about? I've never seen them come down on a... Good heavens! That's different. Anyway, let's get moving. Let's not get distracted. This isn't even close to the beginning of the heist. So we've got to just sort of go along this way. Normally there would be murky waters, but my teammates have already killed them. It doesn't really matter. It's just more enemies. You know about murky waters by now. Like tan cops, but you can hit them in the body as well. As I think. 
Uh, not actually, not actually entirely certain, but from, from, as far as I'm aware, that's how it goes. Rabbit Face has already picked up the C4 that you would normally find in that bin, but again, that's okay, that just saves us looking at the little spinning ring. And here we are. Here is our first objective. We have got to bust open this armoured, armoured car, first things first, and inside it, there will be a safe that we must drill, which I think always contains gold, I don't think there's any variance there. But what we can do right now is look for things like key cards. We've got a green a green mantis package, which is not bad, you only need five of those to get uh, to get each thing. And as you can see, oh shit, he's uh, this guy's having a... Those are troubles. That's what was it last time I was saying about uh, how high fire rates are actually a little bit detrimental when it comes to bulldozers, and this is the this is the epitome of that. The vector puts an incredible amount of amount of bullets down the way, but the fact of the matter is that most of them just most of them will wind up hitting the bulldozer in its armor rather than its faceplate because of the climb associated with that many bullets. Just may as well uh, just uh, slow them down. I think, as far as I'm aware, if you've got hostages. It slows down the first. Uh, the first assault wave, but I I've never been able to tell for sure. So I found somebody's found the A key card. I'm not gonna find one up there, so I'm gonna not bother going in that direction. There's uh there's tasers somewhere. Let's find some tasers. Shit, don't want to get tased when you can't see what's tasing you. Don't tase what can't be tased, as they say sometimes. The drill's gone down, true to form. And we've got two of these guys. So, bearded axe basically working the same as the uh, as the fire axe before it, just a big slow lump of weapon. Not bad though. So I'm gonna quickly restart this drill before shit goes awry. Oh, he got the uh, the marked pig. There's a bonus loot is a pig that just has a marking on it that you can take along with you. You move very slowly when you're carrying it, and I think as, as far as I'm aware, you get extra money. But as I said, I'm not incredibly familiar with Slaughterhouse. Random variance is obviously where you find the pig, yeah, where you find the key cards. Um, and when, once we get to the end, there's a, that's where it properly starts to change, but may as well talk about it as it comes up. There's a taser which we still can't tag. I've got absolutely no idea what that's about. So, there you go. Shittest walkthrough ever. Doesn't even know why you can't tag enemies. But normally I'd be tagging enemies. This guy says, shut the fuck up, find gas cans. Now I don't appreciate that kind of behaviour. It's a team game. Nobody likes an arsehole. So let it publicly be known that Rabbit Face is an asshat. That's not true, I'm sure, he's, I'm sure he's a good guy really, but for the purposes of right now, what I'm working off of, all I know is that he's being a dick to players. But let's not talk about him, let's talk about the game at hand. I'm going to restart this drill, because we take less damage while we're restarting drills, and that means that we should have ample opportunity, this tank cop's probably about to stick me with a melee. There we go. Is that an actual tape? No, it's just a... A dead shield, shield, a carcass of a shield. Now let's switch over to this weapon. Love this sight with the, uh, with uh, this gun. It's very mad, handsome. And there you can see. I'm just gonna switch it over to single shot because, to be honest, with a weapon like this, that's all you need. You're just wasting ammo if you shoot them more than once. You only need one headshot. That's all there is. How are we looking at for time? The drill is nearly finished. What happened to you, pal? Quickly, melee him! Nice. We got another... Oh, they, they got the shield. Does it matter? I tagged, a, I tagged a cloaker, but I think I also killed a civilian. I did as well. Sorry, pal. Didn't mean that. We, got a we do have a laser sight, but it's one of the... I hate when a laser sight comes up from the top. It's really, it's really hard to aim with it. So I'm not even going to bother with that. You, like I said in previous episodes, your stability bonus stays uh, even if the laser isn't actually on. It's a flat increase and the laser is purely aesthetic, literally to make it easier to aim. Ah, the, uh, the safe is finished so we can take the gold out of the back and use these uh, conveyor belts to move it 
I want to say faster, but at the end of the day, I'm not even sure if it really does move it faster. It's just a little bit of interactivity. Overkill were probably ecstatic when they programmed these uh, these little rollers that push the uh, that push the bags forward. Say overkill. I'm not even sure. There's the Starbreeze overkill situation, which I don't really understand because I am not an industry expert. Ah well. Right. So as again, we're just going to be moving these bags along the way, putting them on the on the. It's not even a conveyor belt because it's got individual rollers. It's like uh, the cust uh, customs in an airport, the thing that you put your bag on. Only if your bag was full of gold, they would definitely stop you, because you would be over the weight limit, and therefore you would have to pay a fine. And also probably other reasons. Was that cloaker just leaping over the, over the way there? That was incredible. Look at the climb there. That was, uh, that was savage. Might as well take one of the bags off of the belt because we run faster than they move. And we come out into the, well, third technically, but second part of the heist, the open area. That's probably going to turn into a turret at some point. Uh, yes. The pick only gives you 10,000. What's the point now that you don't get an achievement for it? Uh, yes, this, this place gets really, really hectic. You get enemies coming in from the top there. They, they can shoot you from all the way over there if you're standing here. They come from all angles. They're in the actual, in and amongst the crates. Oh, it's an absolute clusterfuck once it gets to... This is this is the area that I was talking about. This is why I probably wouldn't be able to finish it on my own because I'm not an I'm like I'm not I'm not an expert. I'm an I'm, I'm an advanced. Let's say I was gonna say intermediate, but I don't think that's fair. I'd say an advanced player. No, I'm not an expert player. If I was skiing, I would be on a red run or an easy black. There's a there's a there's a niche way of putting it. I'm sure plenty of skiers are like, finally, someone who, someone who recognises my interests. And I do, I've been skiing many times in my life, I quite enjoy it. Jesus! Two, two cheeky headshots there. He managed to get up of his own accord it seems, I'm not quite sure how that went down. Maybe he was uh, rezzed by the other guy, not quite clear on what happened there. Petrol, unlike in Fallout 4, we can't shoot that petrol. But it would have been cool if we could, even if we needed to use a Molotov, but that's just additional bullshit. That didn't need to happen. That's almost all the bags. Here they come with the rest of them. This has been very, very quiet, I must say. Normally this area is absolutely heaving with enemies when you come out, but we must have just got a uh, fortunate timing towards the end of a uh, towards the end of an assault wave. So we start the crane here, which starts shifting this trap, apparently. And you'll see what we do with that later on. But for the moment. We have just got to just basically carve our way through enemies and not really do anything else. Somebody went down. Rabbit face, what happened to you? What are you doing over there, pal? Let's not give this cloaker the time of day. The cloaker was the danger there, so we eliminated the danger. Using the vector to take out shield, and then we can get rabbit face back up. Hopefully he doesn't call me a dick for my trouble. And at the end of the day, he got rezzed by our Inspire teammate anyway, so it didn't really matter. This boy's being tased for us. Oh no, I've been tased with the vector out, you don't want that. That's not good at all. Now, yeah, the, the rest of this segment is basically just going to be Lansing, running about just killing enemies. He just fell over, that wasn't even me, oh right. <laughs> Whoops. Let's just sort of hose bullets at these guys, take them down. They are actually more of a threat, I find. The boys up the top, you can be taking damage from them and just not realise where the damage is coming from. So it's like, if you're playing this heist and you start dying for seemingly no reason, it's those guys and it's the snipers that are up the back. Good old Le Dog on the floor. I may as well make the go through the motions even if he winds up getting inspired, you never know what might happen. Is he using the Vector as well? No he's not, he's using Jacket's piece, an alternate submachine gun, similar to the Vector, very high uh, very high rate of fire uh, with relatively, relatively low accuracy with high stability. That is an astounding, uh, astounding rate of fire. I think, I think this one's, uh, I, think, I think the Vector has a higher rate of fire than Jacket's piece, I want to say so anyway. I wonder if they can just, nah, couldn't quite, what? There we go. My teammates seem to be able to handle themselves, which is quite convenient. It means we can actually focus on the environment itself. 
But this is, uh, I mean, I say that, but this is literally all there is to it, really. It's just a selection of crates that you can dart in between. This is definitely harder than First World Bank was, I would say. I would say so, for sure. Whoop. I must say, the uh, Vector modded. Normally when I'm using the Vector, it's on a... Oh, you cheeky bastard! Hiding behind the way, classic. Uh, yeah, normally when I'm using the Vector, it'll be on a uh, crit build. So concealment, concealment crits. Meaning, um, uh, meaning I have to not have certain mods on it to keep the concealment low. So its uh, stability is actually a lot lower normally when I'm playing with the Vector. But... Uh, with with the edge with mods on it, this is an actual, an actually really powerful weapon. Like the, you can really send bullets down the way. Like so much shots. As far as the SMGs go, I really underrated the rector, uh, the rector, the vector. Oh rector, he's spreading the gospel of lead. Ah, but now, uh, uh, yeah, now what's happening is we are uh, shifting the loop. To somewhere, I'm not actually. I've never been clear on what on what exactly you do with the loot in this house. It just sort of disappears at one point. Ah, oh, shit. The snipers are doing their job well. Oh, they're doing their job only too well. Are they still around? Okay, I'll get I'll get low dog up just now. Oh, fuck can. I've got teammates. That, this guy. Come on now. There we go. Uh, I'll get Ladog up, but he's probably just about to be inspired anyway, so it doesn't matter. Maybe not? No, not. Okay, fair enough. That's fine. Uh, the Falcon Rifle? Uh, the Falcon Rifle's quite good. The Falcon Rifle was added with the uh, Big Bank DLC. You, you unlock parts for it by uh, completing Big Bank achievements, hence why I don't have the uh, Fort Grip that I would optimally equip. can't remember quite how you get that. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It could be for getting one of the NPCs that you find to the vault, but that might be wrong. Uh, yeah, at any rate, it's it's an interesting weapon. High accuracy, low stability, assault rifle, battle rifle really. Uh, I think it's one of two weapons, although I don't know what the second one is, that is more accurate and stable when you're standing, although that, that, that could entirely be bullshit. Let's test that out right now. So we're aiming at... And then... It does seem maybe a little bit. I might be wrong about that. I'm sure I remember hearing that somewhere, but I don't want to be spreading misinformation, so don't quote me on that. Now, the finale. We've got to make our escape through the blue containers. Always the blue ones. Remember that. The blue ones are what you're looking for. Stay blue. I'm blue. Dabba dee. Dabba die. And other uh, blue. Blue velvet she wore, allegedly. So they say. Uh, I can't think of anything else that has blue. Whoa, hello friend! Oh shit! Fuck it, doesn't matter. F to ignite the trap. None of this. This is the trap, as uh, Bane keeps saying. Uh, which uh, that wouldn't, doesn't seem to really do anything. They've, they've already established that they can climb over the other containers, so what's that doing? Is that just a distraction? At any rate, that is Slaughterhouse complete. We'll probably get a pretty comparative amount of, uh, about amount of loot. Well, part B. I don't know where that yawn came from. I'm just, just, I am sprightly today. Just all of a sudden, Slaughterhouse just took it out of me. Got another gauge coin, presumably, uh, oh, well, there it says, gauge mod, gauge mod, curious, put courier assignment, courier assignment. Pay attention next time, 990, is it? Just over a million, good lord, keep going. I think that's more than we got for uh, First World Bank. We should get two levels. Yep, good two. And even two. Not bad. And we get an extra two skill points for reaching level 80, bringing us up to four, which is quite good. Uh, I'll always go left, because left is the way. Hopefully I get a... I want a drill. I didn't get a drill. I got a rubber grip. Good. Sounds useful. And that was Slaughterhouse. That wasn't bad at all. Let's go into our skills and see what we want to do with them. Now we've got a choice here. We do have four, meaning we could pick one of the top end skills, but I 
think. Ideally, we want to get all the way up to bulletproof, but that's really... It is actually possible. No, it wouldn't be... I think, I think we could maybe get the actual skill itself. Yeah, we could. We could get the first rank of the skill itself. That'll be the last thing that we get, though, and that's assuming that all the math works out, right? Um, at any rate, I could just get the weapon accuracy increase with all single-shot weapons and then stability with rifles, because that's not bad. Snap to zoom being faster is also not bad, but let's give a quick look. No, I think I'm just going to stick with that. Let's get sharpshooter rank 1 for the extra, and then rank two spent another four points and then we can get the first rank of that as well not bad okay we'll get sharpshooter rank one and two meaning our stability with the rifles increased by eight and every single shot weapon gets plus four to accuracy meaning pistols shotguns certain rifles i don't know if that counts if you switch over to single shot on a weapon that has different firing modes but anyway Thank you for watching the two updated and re-released heists for Payday 2. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did enjoy them, uh, then please leave a like, comment, subscribe, or even share. You can also follow me on Twitter at GDWCrunt or on Facebook. The link to that and my Twitter is in the description down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time. Goodbye for now.